<laughs> so the say is, Eddie, if you'll take these right here, Eddie, if you grab this other set, don't, don't pass them out yet. I'll be ready to pass those out. We're talking about how to talk. How to talk. We're talking about, and part of talking is listening. How about that? Matter of fact, one of the biggest parts of talking is listening. How do we know that? See, there's a difference in talking and communication. A drill sergeant talks. Uh, a teacher in the classroom does all the talking. But if you want to communicate, if you're going to communicate, then you've got to mix talking with listening. Amen? It's got to be there. That's what we talked about listening to God. So they were, going to, they were going to start talking about listening to people, have some listening skills. And I have to say that sometimes I have to, not sometimes, a lot of times, I have to work on my listening skills. Okay? Because sometimes people get talking and, and automatically when they start talking, I don't think I've got the answer. Or uh, when they're talking to the Holy Ghost, I know it's the Holy Ghost speaking to me because it's something I had no idea of thinking about. I don't want to tell them when I got to sit there and be quiet and listen. And when the opportune time comes, then tell me. And so that's that's what we're doing now. So we're talking about listening to others. Everybody got an outline? Okay. Here we go. And uh, anyway, I'm, in just a minute, I want you to pass out those right there. <coughs> you constantly and continually deliver messages that reveal the true disposition of your heart. It's not just what you say, but it's the way you say it, the way you listen to others, and the way you look at others. And so here's, we're talking about steps to the solution, uh, communication solution. And our key verse is Ephesus, I mean Ephesians, Ephesus, the church of Ephesus. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. A heart that listens. And this is cut way down to this part right here. I got to accept a little bit, a few sentences in there. Listening is easy to fake. There's people you think are listening. Yeah, I've seen people at work and I'm giving them these instructions and here's what I need you to do. And they're shaking their head up and down. And, and, and then as they walk away, they said, now where'd you want me to go? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you were just shaking your head, yes. Now you have where to go. Or, or, you know, and so, and I can't find my own self, and people are talking to me sometimes, I'm like, uh-huh. And all of a sudden, my mind says, you got this, now think about something else. You do it unconsciously. It's unconscious, because you can, you can hear, you can hear four times faster than you can talk. Did you know that? That's so, so, so. so. <laughs> yeah, but you can hear, the speed of sound, I mean, the speed, the speed, you can hear Four times faster than you can talk. And so when people are talking, here's the problem. They're talking at one speed, and you're listening to, the, to in your brain, you're actually listening. Like you're talking, they might be talking at this speed, but you're hearing it at that speed, but then so your mind can still think about other things while they're listening. So if you take your mind off of it, then there you go. You're thinking about something else. So, so it's very important that you listen. So here we go. Uh, listening is easy to fake. Attentiveness is, uh, attentiveness is simple to pretend, but real listening requires effort. It's hard to listen. If you're going to sit down and listen, like these guys listen to 15 talks in 72 hours, plus we did a lot of other things uh, along with this, a lot of other activities, and you, and, and you sit there and listen, and if it's, you have to make yourself stop and listen. I find myself as I'm taking notes sometimes. Uh, Take a notes, I go, well, that, that's the best tea I've done in a long time. I'm trying to make another tea like that. You know, <laughs> instead of listening. Because, again, you listen four times faster than you talk. So no matter who you're talking to or who's talking to you, now, I might, you might have to listen two times faster as I can talk. Because I can talk very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my, my talk was the last an hour. And when I did it here, for them, it last 30 minutes. And so the guys actually in the back, I, I know y'all might not have saw this, but the guys in the back sometimes were doing like this. <laughs> and it, it did not mean that they were going, oh, great woman. <laughs> that meant slow it down. 
Slow it down. And so, so, so again, uh, because you can hear four times faster than you can talk, know this. Your mind can wander. Right? Yeah, and, 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 uh, so here we go. Our self-centered tendency is to tune out others and, and tune out tune others out and our own thoughts in. We tend to muse and reminisce and think about what we're going to say next. The second step, the first step was learning to listen to God. The second step is to become a great, a genuine listener. Uh, the second step is to becoming a great listener and I, and or I, 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 I didn't look at how I wrote that. A great listener or learning, it should be or not is, or learning how to listen to others. All right? Now, listening to others must be active listening. Now, I'm going to tell you just this first little part, and then Ed's going to pass out some more papers to you. All right? One more paper to you. Listening with focused attention. Now, this is hard to do. It's just so, so hard to do. Here's some do's and don'ts. When everyone there's don'ts and there's do's. Don'ts and I always started with the don'ts first and I got the do's. Alright? Listen with focused attention. Number one, don't interrupt. We have a tendency to want to interrupt. You know, and, I, I, and even if I'm working with somebody in the office and I know that I've got to be somewhere in an hour, I feel like I can't even look at my watch. Because they think I'm time with them or tell them to hurry up. So what I've done is, what I've done is on my desk I have a clock and it's turned toward me. And so while I'm listening, that little clock doesn't even look like a clock necessarily. So I can look at my clock to see what time it is without them thinking that I'm, you know. And I'm sitting in a chair, I've got the clock behind there so I can look at the clock without them knowing I'm looking at the clock. Because I don't want to interrupt them. Because as soon as somebody sees you looking at your clock, they start speeding up. You understand? Have you ever been talking to somebody and you look down at your watch all of a sudden and go, I I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so if you can help it, don't be looking at, your, looking at your watch is interrupting, believe it or not. Don't let your emotions of anger or any emotions override your thinking. Again, uh, uh, if I've gone in and I have gone in and, and broken up a fight, or I've gone in in the middle of an argument and I have to know both sides, and, 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 and I know both sides, or at least what I perceive on both sides. And, and I can, if, I, if I let my emotions get in there, I can say, you know, you had no business doing that. You know, especially if I had to watch the news on uh, a few days before I go to go to uh, Pitt Detention Center. And then I have to, uh, without fail, the ones I see up there with the most uh, uh, heinous crimes, I wind up ministering to. And so I got to remember, Stop. He's not been charged yet. Stop. You know, like I told you, like the guy that I, I've been ministering to for years. And, I, and he was just seen to be such an innocent young man. And then I had to be watching the news one night. And there he was just the night before I went to, before I went to put attention. And he had killed his girlfriend who was pregnant with his baby. He killed his girlfriend and the baby. And this is what he was accused of. And so when I go in there, I couldn't even look at him. I, was, I just couldn't. And so I handed him a paper, and I said, God loves you. Put your hand in here, we're going to pray. And I left. It took me two or three times going before I could put my, before I could actually engage in conversation with him again. Because my emotions ran high when I got around that man. So, so you got to remember, your emotions, keep your emotions out of the way when, you, when you're trying to listen to somebody. Number three, don't begin thinking of how you're going to respond. Here's my biggest one. I start thinking about how I'm going to respond. You know, stop. If you're listening to somebody, let them talk. One of the best things to do when I'm doing on counseling, I pull out a piece of paper and I said, do you mind if I write this down? And they go, okay, so when I'm writing it down, it's called a verbatim in counseling, but I write it down, it's what it does, it keeps me focused on what they're saying. Plus if they come back next time and they tell me a different story, or they say, I can't remember, I've got it right there. So I can say, no, ho, 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 here it is right here. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. So, so, don't be sitting there worth thinking about how you're going to respond. Because remember, are you listening to understand or are you listening to respond? If you're listening to respond, you're waiting for a chance to get your crowbar in there and pull it apart so you can say something. If you're listening to understand, then you're asked to let that person talk. Right? And, and I can tell you if I'm talking to somebody, 
If they start looking at their watch, or they start looking around, or they're looking through their phone, or they're doing whatever, you know what? In my mind, they're not listening. Because you cannot listen to two things at once. It's impossible. So, so when I do that, and I'm talking to somebody, and I really get into it, and I see them start, and then see them texting while I'm talking. You know what I do? I go, okay, I'll see you later. Or I just shut up. And, and if I'm talking to somebody on the phone and all of a sudden they quit talking, I know what's going on, they're doing something else. So I just stop talking. And when I stop talking, it may take a few minutes, and I have to finally say, oh, aren't you going to finish your story? And I want to say, well, why did you ask me that when I quit talking? Why'd you wait for two minutes? Because you were busy doing something else. You wouldn't have heard what I said to start with. You know, and I have done something like this. Yep, yep, that old gray barn caught on fire and we lost three hogs and a pig, I mean, hogs and two, two cows and, and the farmer, he got burnt down at the dell. And they go, that's nice. They're not listening. People need to know you're listening. Okay, so now, look, so don't begin thinking how you respond. And another thing, don't be quick to answer. Now, let me just throw something in there. Now, if the Holy Ghost is burning something in you, you know it's the Holy Ghost, then, 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 then that's different. When you know it's the Holy Ghost, you may want to just say, well, have you considered? You know, don't go out and say, oh, God's speaking to me right now, and he's telling me if you don't listen to me, he's going to throw down a fire from heaven. You better listen. But just, just, again, be, be careful how you listen. Because you know what? What I have found out when I'm counseling people is I learn more and, and I can help them more if I listen. Don't you hate going to the doctor and you say, I got a pain right here and he gives you medicine and sends you out? He didn't even ask how it happened or whatever. Or you're, why you're talking to him, he goes, oh, I got this. I'll be back in a minute. Brings a prescription. When the doctor does that, you know what I'm thinking? You ain't heard a word I said. That's right. So, here's what it says. Everyone should be quick to listen Slow to speak and slow to become angry. James 1 19. There's a very, very powerful verse. Understand, here it is. Understand this, my beloved brother, that every man be quick to hear a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and slow to get angry. And then, and then watch this now. So what do I do? If I'm going to focus my attention, what do I do? I'm glad you asked. Here's what you do, do. <laughs> Not what you don't do. This is a, remember the doobies? Remember the doobies on Rapper Room? There's the doobies and the don't bees. Here's a doobie. <laughs> here, number one, hear feelings that are being expressed. Look beyond the content to the context. Wow. Wow. I can sometimes listen, and I can tell by just listening to them talk. I've stopped and I've actually listened. And I know. You just need to stop for a minute. And I, go, and I will go, we need to stop for just a second. We need to either pray or we need to get a bag, we need to breathe in and get some carbon dioxide because you're hyperventilating. Some people are that upset. I say, get your bag, we're going to breathe in it. I'm not, you are. We're going to breathe in the bag and you get some carbon dioxide in you and calm you down because right now you're getting ready to go into oxygen and you're going to go out of here. Uh, or, or we just stop and we just start praying and, uh, and, and, and I just said, listen, if we're going to do this, we've got to calm down. We've got to calm down so we can talk. Because right now, when people get like that, they forget times, dates, everything. And they'll get talking. That's why I like writing stuff down. You'll find out. They might talk about something like everything happened last night and find out one part of that happened two years ago. Another one happened three years ago. One part happened two weeks ago. And then this happened last night. But they get so, uh, that by the time they get through like this, they've got you thinking everything happened. So it's important that you listen, you hear the feelings that are being expressed. Number two, do try to emphasize, uh, uh, empathize with the feelings of the others. What, remember what I told you the difference between sympathy and empathy? Sympathy is I just care, or I try to show you I care, but it doesn't really affect me. If I empathize, it affects me. Jesus, before he, but Jesus, before he did anything for anybody, said it, it got him here. He was sorrowful. It, 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 he had compassion. And that word compassion means his insides were hurting. When he did something, people had compassion. So empathize. That, that's some risk. To, not sympathize, empathize. With the feelings of the other. And number three, do reflect or repeat or paraphrase when appropriate. Meaning if somebody comes to you talking, you go, can, can you tell me that again? 
or say, so you're saying that, that this happened. And they go, that's not what I meant. Well, that's what you said, so clarify that. You know, or paraphrase what they're saying. Uh, I had, I, I, years ago, I had a, a father and a daughter, and the, the father brought the daughter to me, and, and he said, I don't know what's going on, can't figure it out, but we got some problems here. And we get talking, and, and I, I, I said, I told him, you can stay with us, but, but I'm talking to her. She said, stay right there, and if I need you, I'll ask you. But I, I, I told him ahead of time, I want you to be there, but I don't want you to say anything. Nothing. And then I talked with her, and I kept repeating and paraphrasing, repeating and paraphrasing, and listening to her emotions. And I gave her a chance to breathe. I gave her a chance to get through her emotions. And in 10 or 15 minutes, Daddy found out more than he knew and he lived with her. Because I listened. And I kept guiding the questions. And he cried and she cried, had me cry. We're all three crying in there. You know, and he said I had no idea. You know, but again, he had been he'd been in the middle of it, but had not listened, had not looked. So it was very important. And maintain eye contact. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. Proverbs 18, 13. He who answers before listening. How many ever answered before you heard it all? Oh, yeah. Now, I think I told you about this before, but I, I read one, one report on a little big one. One of the reports I read and saw on the History Channel, too, about little big one is Custer, he liked, he liked the challenge. He was not afraid of a challenge. He wouldn't back down from a challenge. But he had false scouting reports. He didn't know that the whole Sioux Nation and all these others were waiting for him. He thought it was just a smaller pack. He didn't know it was the whole way everything. They shot everything they had in. So he didn't bring enough men. He didn't bring enough ammo. He didn't bring enough anything. So when he's needing help, these other guys are supposed to be coming in anyway to help him from two different directions coming to help him. And they were cut off by these Indians, so they couldn't get to him. And so now he tells a guy that can't even speak English to go get me some, get, get wagons full of men and ammo and stuff to help me. And when he got, when that man who couldn't even speak English come and told the people that he needs wagons, they said, wow, he must be killing the Indians so much he needs wagons to carry the spoil off. Lack of communication. His information was bad, given to him. And his information given for help was bad. People were talking, but nobody was listening. See, it's important. Like, any, pass those papers out. all kinds of listening skills, there's all, all kinds of all kinds of ways they tell it, and I've been told many different ways, and, and so I have to find this, and I said, well, this actually wraps up all that stuff, I, the, the, and adds some extra to it, so this is, this is really awesome. When you're listening to somebody, it actually is a technique. You watch people. You watch people, now listen carefully, have you noticed there are certain people that other people hover around now you watch the people they hover around to. Usually the person they're hovering around to is not the big, I mean, it's not just because he can joke and carry on. The person that they, they hang around with is actually the person that has active listening skills. And people feel important because people are listening. Now, that's, that's you think, well, they're just a big, they're, they're the class clown, or, or they just cut up and people just are drawn to them because of that. Well, that, that does have a way of drawing people. But it doesn't, that's just for fun. But when people are really seriously hurting, you watch the people that, 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 that there's usually one or two people in the group that everybody seems to be drawn to. And those people that are drawn to are people that actually have good active listening skills. And these skills right here will take you a long way in your job, in your family, in your own marriage. It'll take you so far. And here they are. That, that, the technique, active listening, is really an extension of the golden rule. Think about this. The golden rule. What's the golden rule? 
do unto others that you would have them do unto you. That's why Mr. Fountain had another golden rule. The man with the gold makes the rules. <laughs> That's what he used to tell us. He, yeah, he was telling me, we'd be at the table talking at the manager meeting, and we said, here's how we're going to do it. And he goes, no, golden rule. Man with the gold makes the rules. All right, then we're going to do it. We called it the Reggie Factor. All right. Here it is. To know how to listen to someone and think about how you want to be listened to. Well, ideas are largely intuitive uh, and may take some practice to develop or redevelop the skills. So here's, here's what good listeners know, or you should, the good listener, and you should too. Ready? Number one, face the speaker. This is so common sense. If I'm in front of you and I'm hurting and you're looking all around, you're not listening to me. You can tell me you are, but you're not. It's impossible. You're hearing a little bit, but you're not hearing a lot. You're hearing just a little bit of it. That's why DC and Daniel and Beth learned a long time ago. If they want something from me on Sunday, they come to me while I'm talking to people. And they said, Daddy can I have your keys, Daddy can I have a dollar, Daddy can I have this, that. And I listen to that person, and so I just start handing it out. And then I go back for my keys, can't find them. I go, where'd my keys go? I just had them when I came to church. They came and got them while I was listening to somebody. I was trying to listen. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Number two, maintain eye contact, at least to the degree that you all remain comfortable. Now, if you get on somebody and they're talking, you go, no, that's not good. Minimize external distractions, turn off the TV. Y'all said y'all's husbands did that on Sunday night. Wow. When I went to ask Linda Mary on April Fool's Day, I come in and I turned off the television. And she said, she knew something was up when I turned off the television. I said, honey, we got to talk. And she said, yep, he wants to talk, he turn off television. Man, this is important. <laughs> okay. Put down your book or magazine and ask the speaker or other listeners to do the same. If, you, if, 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 you're, if I'm talking, if, I, if I'm spending my time to talk to you and to listen to you, then here's what you think about. If you're in this conversation, if I'm taking my time to talk to you, or you're taking time to talk to me. Both of us should have courtesy enough to put the stuff down. Okay? I was talking with somebody. I drove an hour to help somebody one night. And the person really didn't want me there. And I knew they didn't. But I told, I mean, I told the Lord. The Lord told me to go. I believe my heart told me to go. So I drove over an hour to get there. And the person said, well, I'm going to listen. But I'm going to do this while I'm listening. And so he was playing games on his, he was sending texts and playing games. While I was talking to him. And I thought to myself, God, if you hadn't told me to be here, I'd leave right now. I kept on talking. He kept on playing. I heard the game going off and I heard I heard text coming in. And finally, what I said, God, you gotta help me break through. Help me break through this crust. And all of a sudden I said something and it, and I, I heard it. I heard the ding 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 and it weren't the phone. He put the phone down. And said, tell me more. And within 10 minutes, I was sitting on the couch beside him with my, with my little, uh, not laptop, but a tablet. And I was showing him stuff. And he was going, tell me more, tell me more. And never again, I've talked with him on 10 different occasions, never again when I come in, does he sit there and do this while he's talking to me. No, now, he's, now he puts that down. And he listens because he says, you know what, what you say makes a lot of sense. I've never heard this before. I want to hear it. You know, uh, and, and, and so here it is. You've got to maximize, exter minimize external distractions. Number two, respond appropriately. Show that you understand. Here's what you can say when people are talking to you, and you need to. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Uh, it, it's fine to do that because people know you're listening. Because I, I, a lady, a lady I called the other day, uh, uh, trying to work out the telephone service, and we're trying to work out the telephone service. She says, "Hold on a minute, I see what you're talking about now. Let me fix it." And so she's trying to fix it, and then she quits talking. There's not any that Brenda John music going, nothing. And after about ten minutes, I said, "Are you still there?" She said, "I'm still here, sir. I'm just working on your problem." I said, "Well, just breathe or something." <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and so, again, also, watch this. I don't like to say it because it's my son. But you watch DC. Because DC's been around me so much now. DC, when he's talking to you and he's getting into it, he starts to push his legs like this. And he puts his arms like this. And he starts doing like this. And he looks at you. He starts going, mm-hmm. 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 Why is he doing? He's practicing that listening skill. Mm-hmm. I watch him sometimes and say, you good boy. You good boy. Because when I was talking to him back years ago, he was going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cell phone, yeah. I well, didn't, didn't have cell phones back in those days. Okay. Some, sometimes so, he says, you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so then what you do is say, if they're talking, especially if the person is talking to you, again, you're trying to listen to them. This is all about listening. It's not about talking. Listening. You can say, well, what did you do then? They go, well, I just, you know, I just went and told them what I thought. Then you go, well, what did you tell them then? What did they do? What did they say? Okay, number five, focus solely on what the speaker's saying. Try not to think about what you're going to say next. The conversation will follow a logical flow after the speaker makes their point or her point. Minimize internal distractions. Your own thoughts keep seeping in. Simply let them go and continuously refocus your attention on the speaker as much as you can during as much as you do with the wood during meditation. Anybody understand what I'm saying? When you're meditating on God's word, you try to get all these other distractions out of your way. And you just try to think of his word. And this, this day and age we live in is so full of distractions. You know, I was trying to, I, I, I had this, when I was at the Mayas Walk, I had this, this stuff that had to be done. And so I was trying to make sure everything was done in the right order and done the way it's supposed to be. And I was trying to listen to the speakers, but I can honestly say during that whole weekend, I did not have 10 minutes between somebody tapping me on the shoulder, pulling me out of the room, or one of the pilgrims or somebody pulling me out to talk to me. And so, so, so that's what I was there for, but as far as being able to get into all that stuff, I couldn't because my mind was totally being pulled away on, on something else. So here it is. So focus solely on what the speaker is saying. Minimize internal distractions. Simply, like I said, just refocus your attention. Keep an open mind. Wait until the speaker's finished before deciding that you disagree. Try not to make assumptions about what the speaker is thinking. How many times have you already assumed it? You already got him ready. You've already got him tagged and back, back and tagged, or however you say it. And then you find out when it gets to the end of the conversation that he just didn't know how to express himself. Number eight, avoid letting the speaker know how you handle a certain situation. It's okay when it's appropriate. But don't just jump in and go, oh yeah, I know how that happened. I can tell you. No, no, let them finish talking. When they finish talking, then you can share your experience. Let them finish talking. And then, oh, here it is. Look, unless they specifically ask for advice, assume they just need to talk it out. Here it is. Even if the speaker is launching a complaint against you, wait until they finish to defend yourself. The speaker will feel as though their point has been made. They won't feel the need to repeat it. If somebody keeps repeating something to you, and somebody, if you talk to somebody, they'll tell you something over and over and over and over again. You know why I tell you that? Because they feel you didn't understand it. You didn't hear it. You didn't recognize it. They don't think you know what you're They don't think you even care sometimes. So just... Tell them, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that the first 25 times you told it. No, you don't do that. And then, and then engage yourself. Uh, ask questions for clarification. Once again, wait till the speaker's finished. This way you won't interrupt their train of thought. After you ask questions, paraphrase their point to make sure you didn't understand it. Start with, so you're saying, again, it, well, I don't even think, well, you're just telling me counseling stuff. Well, yeah, I am. But everybody in here is going to get opportunity to counseling. You know that? That's right. Every day of your life, somebody's going to come to you for advice. That's how you listen. So here we go. Go on, let's get back to the other thing. And it's good stuff. Yes, it okay. is. All right. Number, number two. Listen without judging. Here's the don't. Don't criticize. Number one. Number two. Don't show contempt or disgust. While they're talking to you, don't go, ah, oh, here we go again. 
know what they're going to do? They're going to shut up. Because the bridge is up and now it's a wall. Uh, communicate. Don't communicate your opinions. And don't react in ways that will put another in a defensive position. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to learn. Or listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. We just read that a little while ago. The do's when you're, is this. Allow another to grumble and complain. Sometimes people just want to get it out of their system. Allow expressions of negative feelings. Do release your own ideas of what is right. Release them. Just release them for a moment. And there's people come to me and they, they just want to gripe. And, I, and I'll sit down and listen. I'll listen. And I'm going to go to and say, you shouldn't feel that way. Okay, you are feeling that way. So now, now all of a sudden, now they don't want to even talk to you. Okay, you said you shouldn't feel that way. Uh, I had somebody call me one night before Sunday night service and got mad at me. The guy doesn't even live around here. Got mad at me because I couldn't talk to him. I said, well, I am a pastor and I am getting ready to go preach. And the guy said, uh-huh, and I'm, I'm important. I said, yeah, you're very important. And I'll talk to you after service, but I've got to go. Unless you're getting ready to commit suicide or you fell off a cliff and you're dying, we're going to wait until I get through the service. And the man got mad at me. And so uh, after service, I called him back and said, what you want? And, it, and, and again, you know, that time I had to break in because I was walking. I, was getting, I, mean, I, I didn't realize what time it was because he called me right before service. Okay, now, uh, you therefore have no excuse, ye, you who pass judgment on someone else, for whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself, because you pass judgment, do the same thing. And that's Romans 2 and 1. Let me put that a little simpler English here. Therefore you have no excuse or defense or justification, O man, whoever you are who judges and condemns another. For imposing as judge and passing sentence on another, you condemn yourself, because you who judge are habitually practicing the very same things that you censure and denounce. It doesn't mean that you can't be a fruit inspector. Uh, that part of judging, yes, you can be a fruit inspector. I know if something's wrong, and I got it in my head, but my job is not to pass judgment on them. My job is just to listen. All right? Now, here's the last one. Listening, listen without dispensing advice. Here's the don'ts. Don't give premature answers. Number two, repeat platitudes, and don't, do not repeat platitudes and cliches. Don't do that. Uh, it drives me crazy when I'm hurting and I'm trying to talk to somebody and they start shooting out cliches at me. What that means is you're not listening, you just want to try to use that fancy new cliche you just learned. Turn or burn. You know, uh, uh, Spilt, don't, don't cry over spilt milk. Well, I'm going to cry because my milk got spilt. I am crying, okay? Uh, and don't laugh or make fun of another's feelings. And words are many, sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise, Proverbs 10, 19. Here's what you do do. You're a doobie here. Number one, take seriously the words of another. Number two, help others to discover their own answers. If you make decisions for people, you're, you're running your mouth so fast they can't even get a word in edgewise, and you know the answer, and they, they, you've got the answer for them. The problem is you really haven't listened enough to know the problem. And so you're shooting answers at them fast. You can shoot them. Got your Bible down, and, and you're ready to go like wide earth. You're ready to give it to them. Guess what? If you make decisions for people, you're responsible for their outcome. I don't want that responsibility. And this is my child. Now I get my children sometimes, somebody in my family, and I'll go, well, you know, if I was counseling you right now, I'd say, I go, hmm. I said, but you want flesh and blood, and I'm watching you walk out the street and get run over by a car. I might go, hmm. I'm going to talk to you. Matter of fact, sit down. They go, okay, Dad. You know, so, so, but take Take seriously the words of another. Help others to discover their own answers. Realize that active listening is more, than a, more important than talking. People want you to listen to them more than they want you to talk to them. Realize that most people are not really seeking. Here, oh, here it is. Here it is. It's the whole nutshell. We're going to close with a big old nutshell. Realize that most people are not really seeking advice, but rather a sounding 
Husbands, we're the fix-it men. We could really help our own marriage out if we learned that we, ain't got, we don't have to fix everything. Just listen. Because a lot of times if people can talk to somebody that's really li listen now, if somebody's really actively listening to somebody else, then what they're going to do is by actively listening is going to help them solve their, help them solve their own problem. Just by listening. I've had many person go back and go, wow, you knew exactly what to say. No, I didn't. I just listened. Wow, that was the best advice I ever heard. Really? I just listened. You know, so, so, so again, there are times you need tools. And I give people tools, but again, I'm not talking about tools. I'm just talking about sometimes, sometimes people just need a sound board. Be that sound board. Can, can you say, God, I want to be a sound board and actually sound, I've never seen a sound board talk. If it does talk, it's reflecting back what the person's saying. Right? That's right. Shoulder crown, right uh, that's right, a shoulder crown. That's right. Even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his own tongue. One time they asked Abraham Lincoln about that. He said, Why won't you say something in arguments? Or Abraham Lincoln, who loved to tell stories and loved to do anecdotes and all that, Abraham Lincoln. Said it's rather it's, it's better to keep your mouth shut and thought be thought be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is this stuff right here is priceless. This is priceless information. This this can help you be that person. If you practice this stuff, you be that person everybody goes to when they're hurt and and, and they want to talk to you. And they said he's got the best advice when you don't even necessarily have it. It's your listening. And if you're listening to them, that means you're also listening to God. That way God can give you the right things to say to them. And you've heard them out. And God, it's just amazing. This right here will open the doors to so many relationships and help you so much better understand people. Because people, you've heard it, this is a cliche. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Let us pray. Father, I love you and I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you're totally, totally in charge. You've got everything, absolutely everything in control. Lord, I know, God, that, that you're wanting to give a lot of births in this place. But God, when they come in to give birth, we're going to give birth to people that are hurting. You're going to give birth to the hurt people that are hurting and they're needing answers. And you say, well, I can't do this. Yes, you can. If you can become a listener, you can help more people than you ever imagined. God, use us. Use us. Use us. Send in the hurting. Send in the sick. Send in the lame. Father, even send us people that nobody else wants. That's fine. Because God, I know, Lord, you can turn them around. I've seen it many, many, many times. And Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we have tonight to be here together. And Lord, help us never take that lightly. And when we start taking that lightly, it'll be taken away from us. And God, Heaven forbid that our freedom of worship will be taken away from us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, it's the strangest thing about Samson. Samson had those seven locks. So they were pretty thick. And they were, they were, they were locks. They were probably ponytails or pigtails, whatever you call it. And when Delilah cut his hair, he got up to... She said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. He got up and shook himself as before. Now think about something. you got seven locks of hair. When you shake yourself, what's the hair doing? Swinging. It's swinging. And it says he didn't even know that they were gone. That's somebody that's so enamored.
so numb to God's stuff that he shook himself and didn't even know that it was gone. You know what? Coming to church is a privilege that some people in other parts of the world have and don't have. And being able to study the Bible is a privilege, but we're, America's getting so enamored to it that, when, that, that it's going it's to be taken away, but it's not going to be taken away by force. It's going to be taken away by, by apathy. Why? Wow. We're going to surrender freely. Apathy. Well, I'm going to sit down and thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. DC told me, said, guilty as charged. Amen. So you never can tell. There's other guys that said the same thing. Be ready. If we want people to come in, we got to be ready. If we don't, we're going to send them right back out. That's right. We're going to keep a revolving door out there. How many want to shut the revolving door? Amen. This stuff you're getting is telling you how to shut the revolving door. That's right. Right? And I want to, I want to shut that door. Spin them around. <laughs> Stop it. Amen. All right. Our hearts and minds clear? Amen. Amen. Brother Ben, dismiss the prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to gather here tonight. And Lord, we thank you for the message that you put out. And we ask that we learn to listen the way that you would have us to listen, the way that Jesus listens to us. Let us listen to others so that we can do the works that he did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.